Hi everybody, Richard from Sharp Shooting UK here. I just wanted to show you how important quick load is in um, developing a load for a new rifle and helping you choose before you even get to the developing the load what barrel length you need to um, tell your smith you want for a given caliber. Say you're thinking, oh, okay, I want a six and a half by forty-seven Kapua. But I want to get the 140s going. Um, what powder am I going to have to use? In what barrel length to get 2900 feet per second? Am I going to need a 30 inch barrel or will a 21 do it? So these are figures that you can get anecdotally from people, sure, but if you want some really good um, bottom lines, quick load is remarkably accurate at, um, at getting you there. We'll discuss chewing it so that it's very accurate um, with some basic and some advanced settings later. But just for now, we're going to look at new rifles on the way. What barrel length do we want? Okay, I'm going to walk you through it um, with a caliber I've just uh, been playing with myself. Okay, you have here on the right the output window along with this bottom window. The two ones that you put your main data into are the charge and powder one here, and the cartridge or bullet one there. So first off, you choose your calibre in question. Now I've just been looking at 223 Backley Improved. Okay, so we choose that. Alright. It gives you the default settings for that um, caliber. Now, when we go into bullets, the bullet I had in mind for this was the 77 grain tipped match king. But 80 grain AMAX would have been um, on the list as well, so I've run through both of them. So let's open the Sierra bullet file. All the infos included. Choose Sierra from the list. It's got Mosler and Spear and all of the uh, main bullets, Hornady. And the list is frequently updated. Indeed, the tip match kings are very new bullets. So let's see. 224 Sierra 77 grain tip match king. Bingo. It is a um, boat tail bullet, so that is ticked. We won't go into friction proofing now, but that enables you to um, play with how the Molly or HBN coating would, would affect things. Um, what I will do, and this will go into later in more detail, but what I will do is change the cartridge length because the normal reamers are a lot shorter than the one I used. And I know that that's going to give me a cartridge length in the order of fully quarter of an inch longer than that figure there. So I'm going to change the normal default from 2.260 to 2.5. But that's the only change I'm going to make at this point from standard. and calc. Okay. Now, here's your powder window. Now, you could choose your own powder here. Say you had one that was on the tip of everyone's tongue for that caliber. Let's say N140. That's very popular. Let's try that. You can manually play with this. Now, these figures here are the um, powders properties and they're preset you don't really need to play with them what you do play with obviously is the amount that you're going to put in you can get about a hundred and ten percent in the case that would be a decent crush the bottom line is that a hundred percent is generally at the, about the bottom of the neck um, top of the shoulder that that sort of area so you a hundred percent isn't full to the brim so bear that in mind okay so I'm going to put this on 100% and see what pressures we get. It's worth bearing in mind that currently this is set on a 20 inch barrel. If you go back to the um, bullet and cartridge box for a 20 inch barrel. Now I wouldn't consider that for this gun so let's start with 22 and see what that gives us. So we've got our N140. We've got our 22 inch barrel. 
100% fill, which is actually quite a hot charge. You can see in this window here, under 2D3, I clearly improved what the Pmax is, 55k. You may go above that, but I can't recommend that. But um, let's just stick to normal pressure limits for now and see what the best matches are for our barrel weight. So if I come down to 25 there. That's right on the edge of our pressure max in our output window here, 54970. And you can see that we're only getting 2800 feet per second from our 22 inch barrel. It is, however, all burning, 99.99% burned. And this ballistic energy efficiency figure is useful. If that's over 30, you're normally cooking with gas. So N140, which I put in here because I heard that it was useful in AI is it's all burned that's one of the main considerations for choosing a powder and or a barrel length for a given bullet is that you need to know that it um, is going to all burn it burning half of its um, of its charge in the mod is not a good look it means your powder is too slow barrels too short so these are the considerations that Quicklow can help you with when you're when you're dialing yourself in so I'm going to see how much a longer barrel will help me. So I'm going to go over to uh, selected bullet and uh, that section there and put that up to say 28. Okay, let's go really long, 28. See what we get there. But right, we've won 140 feet per second doing that. Powder's all burned. You can see the sort of difference that uh, that barrel length makes. Um, I'm going to show you a way now to play with the output. You put the basic input in, which is your uh, cartridge, your bullet, your um, start-up powder. Um, if you press this one, two, three box here at the top, it allows you to change the output of the data. A bit like a spreadsheet, you can. Put the, file, put the data in and then you can output it how it suits you. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this default option here. Both of the settings above set. 110% case fill, which is you're not going to get any more than that in. So that filters out powders that are massively too, uh, too slow. And we're also going to put this pressure to our max pressure for this cartridge, which is fixed at 55k. Now you could go above that, but let's just stick to safe limits for the sake of my liability so click this both of the above filtered and apply an exit then your output window here which was a pressure curve I'm going to pull that up now gives you a list filtered by maximum attainable speed of your powders at your maximum pressure and no more and no more than 110% case fill. So you're now trying, you're now starting to get a list of the top contenders for speed and um, fill in your gun that you've proposed. This is here with a 28 inch barrel, it's very long. We can see that the excellent new reloader Swiss 60 is um, right at the top of the list. Elko 17, reloader 17 etc etc 62 52 so we can see that um, these are giving 3100 feet per second they're all burnt here propellant burnt 100 percent 99 99 98 that's all that's fine and a little bit over 100 percent fill which is just a nice little crush at the top nothing crazy so we've got here um, a very exciting looking rifle in that 3100 with that high BC long bullet is is um, very 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 efficient for what 28.7 grains of powder 28 here. So I'm starting to think, okay, well if we go for a 28 inch barrel, rock and roll. It's worth noting that personally I have a load of reload to um, 17. So if I go for the long barrel. I can get it all burnt and I can use powder I've already got. I don't have to buy any more of a different type. Whereas if I chose, say, a 
22 inch barrel it might not work so well so these are all factors that you can take to your smith and say this is how i want it done so you can see that quick load is, is quite handy for playing about with the um, data um, what you can do after you've got a rough idea and you've started to settle in on some figures notably the um, possible length of, that your cartridge is going to be and um, the barrel length as you can start looking at the powder in detail so we'll settle on 25 um, bar barrel length and instead of this 140 let's go to top contender let's have a look at this reload of Swiss 62 okay so it fills it all in if we go to 100% 100% fill we can see that our chamber pressure is quite low only giving us 40k so you've got to really cram this in 105 Okay, now we're starting to climb. It's quite low pressure for the speed here. Look, 2854, only 46k. So this is looking like a, a really efficient, low pressure, high speed powder. But interestingly, we're not really burning it perfectly here. When you look in more detail, you start to think, okay, let's try something. A little faster. There we go. 52. All right. That's a bit faster. Our pressure has gone up, obviously, with the same charge. Let's remove a little bit from the case. There we go. 100% of fill, which is 26.5 grains. 53k, which is lovely and you know, within the limits, all burnt, 30% ballistic efficiency, nearly 3,000 feet per second. So that's looking lovely. So, by oh, uh, and uh, what I wanted to show you here as well, when you're on the powder front, is if you go to plus minus here on this top bar, it gives you what difference a little bit more and a little bit less powder makes within the constraints of what you've put in. So here we've got fill, 100%, 54k there, 55, that's starting to go above Pmax. So if we look around here, 26 grains, about 29.50, nice and stable, nearly all burnt. You're starting to look like this might be one of your top three powders to try. So quick load is, is really useful for this, because otherwise you've got to listen to a lot of folk stories about a lot of different guns and with variables that are different to yours, different barrel lengths, a lot of guesswork. Quick load, especially given the price of powder, can save you fortunes and, and, and stop you making costly mistakes, getting the wrong barrel length for the powder you've got loads of, or buying loads of powder and it, it not being right. And, you know, it can... It can be very, very useful for making wise decisions. It can also be useful for looking at the possibilities for you of a caliber. Say you're looking for a new rig, but it's got to have a short barrel. Are you going to get the ballistics that you want with that heavy pill that you want, or is it just going to fall out at the end of the barrel and, and it's just not going to do not going to do the job you need? You know, um, quick load can. You can play with it and work out your next rifle and get it right. You know, get the build right, get the um, get, get the uh, get the parts ordered correctly, make the right choices, choose the right bullet, etc., etc. So um, very, very useful. So that's the basics of which caliber you want, which bullet you want. Um, no major tuning. I did tune the. Um, cartridge length because uh, 223 AI is something that varies enormously from no throat to a, a massive throat so that varies but you know normally with a normal bullet in a normal caliber you could, you, you could leave cartridge length alone and um, you start to get some very useful output with these various um, 
various ways of tuning the data that you've put in, notably the 1, 2, 3 button here, which is the propellant table, and the plus minus that shows you what more or less of the powder you've chosen here will do to your pressures and your output velocities. So I'll be doing more videos in more detail showing more advanced things, but just to give people an idea of how useful quick mode can be, I must say that the accuracy of it, I can't quite understand how good it is. I've come to use it a great deal and trust it, although obviously you have to exercise caution, but it's so accurate, it's shocking. Um, I never thought before I started using it that it could be this useful, but it is It is a crucial starting point in load and rifle development for me now. Okay, there we go.